Hello, welcome to another Table in the Wilderness. Pull up a chair and join me as I share God's Word. Just a small warning, this is only going to be probably be about 75% of God's Word, but the other 25% or so is going to be prophetic insight, uh, knowledge of God's Word and His ways, and trying to put pieces together. We're going to talk about sin nature and the fall of man. And there is a mystery about it. We're, don't gonna, we're not going to understand it completely, okay? So we're just, we will read what God's Word says on it, and then we're going to try to fill in the blanks with what we understand concerning uh, how we put the Word together in different places, and uh, just insight in God's Word and God's ways, and maybe we're going to have some error. I guarantee there will be some mistake here. Again, it is a mystery. So just when you watch this video, understand that some of what I'm going to share is not God's Word, and you have to try to judge it yourself, okay? Now, one of the big things that Christianity has questioned concerning the fall of Adam, mankind, is did the reper repercussions of Adam eating from the tree of knowledge come from God or the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? So we're going to take a look at that today. And again, the general incident of Adam's sin and what happened to Adam and the earth and all creation due to it. Now, maybe you don't understand some of this, so we're going to go over some basic scriptures which speak on the sin nature of man and how it happened overall, and then we'll get into the specifics. Psalms 51, 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You see, we're all born into sin. Okay, we're all born into sin. And why? Romans 5, 12. Therefore, even as through one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed on all men inasmuch as all sinned. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all will be made alive. So because of Adam's sin, and we all come from Adam. Oh, I think I just saw a pheasant fly by. It was a really cool bird. It is a Saturday morning, and I came in, it was an okay temperature, but it's going to get up to 83, and I'm already feeling the heat, so let's get going. All right, so we see that through Adam, mankind fell into sin, and thus through Christ, all can be saved. It's through one man. Now, let's read how the fall of man came about specifically and directly from scripture. We're going to start in Genesis, go all the way to the beginning. We'll start in Genesis chapter 2. We're going to read three verses, 9 through 17, but only three of those verses. And then we're going to go to Genesis 3, and we will read most of 3. Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. And out of the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the middle of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may eat freely. You may freely eat of every tree in the garden. But you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 3. Again, most of the chapter. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Is it so that God had said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, serpent We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now here she added to God's word, God said he didn't, he never said anything about you shall not touch it. He said do not eat it. Verse 4, And the serpent said to the woman, You shall surely, you shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasing to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. So it seems like Adam was right there 
watching this whole conversation. He should have took his authority and said something, but he did not. Verse 7, And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made girdles for themselves. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God in the middle of the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I am naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman who you whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So you see, Adam, he brushed it off and pointed to Eve, and Eve brushed it off and pointed to the serpent. Neither of them wanted to take responsibility. Verse 14, And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every animal of the field. You shall go upon your belly, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And he will bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your sorrow and your conception, in pain, <coughs> in pain you shall bear sons, and your desire shall be toward your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, the ground is cursed for your sake. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. It shall be. It shall also bring forth, excuse me, 18, and it shall also bring forth thorns and thistles to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he had been taken. And he drove out the man, and he placed cherubs at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword, which will turn every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So here we're going we're gonna to judge what we see from these verses, what the re repercussions are and where they came from. From the fruit, the first one, their eyes were opened and they had knowledge. The second one, they were separated from God. We see this in Genesis chapter 2, 7, 8, and 9, and verse 22. So from the fruit, we get two things. Their eyes were opened and they had knowledge and they were separated from God. From God, these are the things that happened. Number one, the serpent was cursed to go on his belly. Number two, enmity between the serpent's seed and Eve's seed. Now here I'm gonna elaborate. We see that Jesus said to like the Pharisees and Sadducees, you are of your, you are of your father, the devil. The devil has children on the earth, people, who follow him or deceived by him and what did they do throughout the history of the Old Testament they tried uh, you know like the Philistines and this and the other people tried to kill the people of God because J Satan knew that Jesus would be born through them and then of course we had um, not, not Caesar one of the other kings I believe who tried to kill all the baby children in the city in the town that Jesus was born in so that is a fulfillment of this. Number three, woman's labor's pains shall be increased. Number four, woman, woman shall desire her husband. Number five, the husband shall rule over the woman. Number six, gr the ground is cursed. The ground will bear thorns and thistles. And number seven, we must work hard. 
because of these curses. And we can find this in Genesis 2, 14 through 19, which I read a moment ago. Now here I, I learned something new and I received correction. I've talked about this before. We all need to be correctable. And this is an example of how I was corrected. Okay, this is this video again. <laughs> I'm blessed by my brother Kevin. He has a, a strong input into what happened for the creation of this video. I don't know if he's going to agree with the outcome, but he brought correction and we need to be correctable. Okay, and I learned more correction through God's word. And here we see this in Romans chapter 8, we're reading 19 through 22. Romans 8, 19, for the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation was not willingly subjected to vanity, but because of him who subjected it on hope. That the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. In previous times, and here I'm going to make a re repentance and correction of a mistake I made. In previous times, I thought the him in verse 20 was Adam because of Adam's sin. But no, the him is God. And in many translations, that him is capitalized. What am I speaking about? Let's read verse 20 again. For the creation was not willingly subjected to vanity, but because of him who subjected it on hope. So God cursed creation, the earth, because of Adam's sin, but in hope that the creation would be redeemed. God did the cursing, but he, he subjected the creation, the earth, to Adam's sin, but in hope. I never saw that before. So thank you, Kevin, for opening my eyes, and thank you, Jesus, for giving us scripture. I've seen this scripture before, but I did not put it all together. Now let's go back and look at the separation of man from God. Genesis 2:17. But you shall not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, See, this is where some people say, well, the Bible isn't true. They didn't die when they ate of it. So let's take a look at this. Okay, man is triune, spirit, soul, and body. Did they die physically that day? No, they did not. Did their soul die? No, in fact, their soul was opened. The eyes of their understanding was opened. It was the reverse of death. They gained understanding and their soul was opened. But their spirit died. Their spirit died and they became separated from God. It is, it is the, can, the spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord. I believe that's in Proverbs. I'll put it on the screen when I half quoted that. It's the spirit of Adam and Eve that died when they ate from that fruit. Now for more on the salvation of spirit, soul, and body, see my video here. And there I talk more in the detail how the spirit, the soul, and the body are saved. But this leaves us with a problem. How come this was not something Adam could repent from? Let me explain. You see, most of, of time, when we sin, we can repent and ask God to forgive us. We see in Romans 6.23, For the, way, the wages of sin is death. But the Spirit of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we know that when we sin, death is there. Okay? But we also see 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So something happened here. Why couldn't Adam and Eve repent? They sinned. Why couldn't they confess and repent? Something happened. Something happened. There was a change. There was a change of nature. Okay? And where else do we see this? And again, I have to thank my brother Kevin. He got, he got something here. And uh, we see this in Revelation. Now this verse in Revelation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read. I've seen so many people 
uh, and books and pastors and preachers and teachers say they don't understand this verse. And I myself did not understand it. But Kevin, he brought out a possibility. This is one of those things, okay? We're not going to be certain this is true. But let's look at this scripture and I'll, I'll share with what Kevin had shared with me. Revelation 9, 6. And in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die and death will flee from them. How is it that people can't find death? <laughs> death is easy, right? Death is easy. You see, Kevin brought this idea out. And I'm not saying he believes it to be true. It might be true. It's a possibility. And now I'm starting to believe it. The mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. Perhaps, perhaps, the mark of the beast is going to be some kind of injection, some kind of procedure that's going to turn on a switch in man's DNA and allow them to live like man lived before. Because in, the, in Genesis, people lived to be about a thousand years old. Now our lifespan is about 80. Perhaps through science, wickedness from demonic, maybe inspiration, a switch of man is going to be turned on and he's going to have long life. He's going to be able to have a strong immune system so all sicknesses won't, won't kill him. That he would only be die through direct violence. Okay, so that would mean death would be more hard to achieve. It is a possibility. So if something is going to be turned on in the future with the mark of the beast, that means something was turned off back in the past. Now, scripture says, and I put, did put this in my notes, and if I could find it, I'll put it on the screen in a moment, that what's going to happen in the future is going to be something similar to something that happened in the past, but man won't remember it. So I'll, if that's a true, I'll put that verse or something similar to that on the screen now. So, was there a change of nature in the past? or a switch was turned off? Did that happen due to the fruit? How could it happen with the fruit? Let's look at Genesis 2, 9 again. And out of the ground, the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So God himself created trees, plants, that were good for food. And then the verse says, the tree of life was also in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So is it that the tree of life and the tree of knowledge were not grown out of the ground by God's hand? Well, the tree of life is an eternal tree. It is in the heavens. Now, if is it the same tree that was, was down on the garden or a branch of it? I don't know. It's one of those mysteries. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil was also in the middle of it and was separate than what we see here. Again, verse 9, And out of the ground the Lord God, God caused to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So is it the tree of knowledge of good and evil was not grown by God? Then how did it get there? Here is one of those things. I believe I have an answer. And I have scripture, like I did on the early one, but there is an interpretation of here that you must submit to, you, to God yourself and see if this is the truth. We're going to read out of Ezekiel 31. We're going to read three verses. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Nor was any tree in the garden of God like him in his beauty. I have made him beautiful by his branches, so that all the trees of Eden in the garden of God envied him. To whom are you like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet you shall be brought down with the trees of Eden to the lower parts of the earth. Here is what I believe. 
In Ezekiel 31, if you read the whole thing, God is talking about, I believe, Pharaoh or the king of Egypt. I could be wrong. It's some king, some leader. But he interposes back and forth between that king and Satan. And this isn't the only time that God does this. There, I believe there's another chapter in Ezekiel, it could be Jeremiah, where he does it with another king and Satan. goes back and forth between them because Satan may possess kings to bring about certain things or is un, that king is under the influence of Satan. But here I believe we see that Satan possessed the tree in the garden or he put his nature into it. Because see, Satan knows what's going to happen to him. He's going to be thrown in the lake of fire. And he wants to take as many as he wants, as he can, into the lake of fire with him. And so he knows, he knows the same thing that we know, that in like in Romans, where was that? I know Romans wasn't written then, but, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Quick here. Romans wasn't written then, but it was a truth, and he knew the truth. That, oh, I lost it. Sorry, here we go. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But he also knew 1 John 1, 1.9, that if we confess our sins. So Satan knew he had to get Satan uh, to get Adam and Eve to, to change nature so that they couldn't repent of that sin. So how could he do it? He had to change their nature. How would he change their nature? He himself had fallen, so he had the nature of sin in him. And he took that nature of himself and put it in the tree. How he did it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay? I don't know. I'm going to throw in another little supposition, a possibility. Okay? The scripture says there's nothing new under the sun. So everything we see here on earth is going to be a copy of something that happened before in the heavens. All right? Do you know who C.S. Lewis is? famous Christian writer. Did you know C.S. Lewis became saved because of J.R. Tolkien? You may not know that. J.R. Tolkien was, I believe he's a Catholic, he was a Christian. He wasn't a strong theologian, but he talked C.S. Lewis into believing in God. And C.S. Lewis grew greater in his faith and became a theologian where J.R. Tolkien did not. J.R. Tolkien is the one who's famous for making Lord of the Rings. Again, this is just a story, but stories have to originate from somewhere. In the Lord of the Rings, J.R. Tolkien had the evil being Sauron. Sauron, Sauron took part of himself and put it into the, that ring, the Lord of the Rings. So the ring, the magic ring in the Lord of the Rings had part of Sauron in it. Is that story referring back to Satan putting some of himself into the tree? I don't know, okay? I don't know. But we see in Scripture that Satan was described as a tree in the garden. We see in Scripture that there is a tree of knowledge of good and evil, and it's not categorized with the other trees that God grew. So you have to decide for yourself. But I gave a lot of truth of God's Word about what were the repercussions of eating that fruit. We see some of the repercussions did come from the fruit, but more repercussions came from God as he judged Adam and Eve. Now, if you want to know more about the difference between the spirit and the soul, I did a video about a month ago called Spirit versus Soul, and you can find that video here. Now, hopefully I've given some understanding here also concerning the mark of the beast that's coming. The mark of the beast is not going to be something you can accidentally take. God himself warned Adam and Eve of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And afterwards, let me read this scripture here, and we will wind this down. After they had taken of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they, he didn't want, God did not want Adam and Eve coming back and taking the tree of life because then they would be eternally stuck in sin. I'm going to read verse, this is chapter, Genesis chapter 3. Yep, Genesis chapter 3, we're going to read 22, 23, 24. And the Lord God said, Behold, the, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground 
from which he had been taken. And he drove out the man, and he placed cherubs, these are angels, at the east of the garden, and a flaming sword, which turned every which way, to guard the way to the tree of life. So God wanted to make sure that they wouldn't come back. The mark of the beast is something similar. It's something, as the scripture says, an angel is going to cry from heaven, okay? Those who take the mark have to worship the beast. They have to worship the Antichrist. This is something significant, and everyone who takes the mark understands the significance, okay? We've seen it with the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we're going to see it again with the mark of the beast. Although I'm not going to be here, and hopefully you won't either. All right, folks, that's going to end our video. Um, again, see some of my previous videos on the jab, the poke, and why I don't believe it is the mark of the beast. I give other reasons, and you can find that video here. All right, folks, that'll end the video today. God bless. Please understand the, the nature of sin, and it came from Adam, and that we need Jesus. Receive him as your Lord and Savior so that you can go into heaven and have eternal life. God bless, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.